Friction, when two surfaces are sliding in opposite directions relative to each other, we can have friction. All of you right now, take your non-writing hand, and if you press it down against the table that you're sitting at, press down fairly hard and pull towards yourself, you will feel a force resisting you. That's friction. That's friction. Friction is due to the microscopic, the nanoscopic, interlocking of molecular hills and valleys between a surface and another object sitting on that surface. Although your lab table, for example, may appear smooth, on the microscopic level, on the atomic level, they are not. If you were to zoom in, you would see that there's all sorts of canyons and crevices. And as they rub across each other, they hook onto those little canyons and crevices. That's friction. Key idea, you can underline, friction resists sliding. If you're ever trying to figure out the direction of friction, ask yourself either which way is the object sliding or which way does the object want to slide. Friction is in the opposite direction. Because of that, friction can resist motion, such as when you're trying to slide something across the floor. You can feel it tugging back, such as when you pulled your hands towards you on the lab table. You could feel something tugging against you. Uh, it, it can also create motion, though, for walking and for rolling. I tried to convince you that when you're walking with your feet, you actually push backwards. The feet are not what push you forwards. It's friction between your feet and the ground that push you forwards, and that's why you can't walk on ice very well. Example one says, draw the direction of friction in each case. A, sliding block. Now there's a very, very slight typo. I was mucking around in Word. Uh, this should be no gap whatsoever. That's supposed to be resting right on the surface. Sorry, I just, the Word software didn't want to cooperate. Maggie, which way is this block moving? To the left or to the right? You know which way friction is then? Yes. The two that I find really interesting are B and C. A lot of people will tell you that for a car to speed up, it's the motor that's pushing it forwards. The motor is not what's pushing it forwards. If you look at a car speeding up where the tires touch the ground, the tires are attempting to rotate that way. The tires are pushing backwards against the ground. Forces come in pairs. If the tires push backwards against the ground, what does the ground do? Pushes forwards on the tires, and that force is friction. Friction on a car is pushing forwards. Friction is what makes a car go forwards, not the motor. What the motor does is applies the force to the axle, which causes the tires to spin. But I'm telling you, it's the tires pushing backwards that make a car go forwards. If you draw a free body diagram on a car and you have F motor with an arrow pointing forwards, all snaps. not even going to show up on our free body diagram. What about for a car slowing down? When you're going really fast and your tires are turning, when you press the brakes, what actually happens is the car tires apply a slight force or a big force, depending on how hard you press the brakes, forwards. Forces come in pairs. Newton's third law. If the tire pushes forwards against the road, what will the road do? Jacqueline, what will the road do? I think you're right, but it was hard for me because you said, push back. Yep. For slowing down, friction points that way. Uh, those two reasons, B and C, those two examples, this explains why it's hard to drive on ice and it's nothing to do with your skill level, Chloe. The physics says it's hard to do to drive on ice. Turns out the amount of friction depends on two things. The first thing it depends on is the type of surfaces that are in contact and how slippery or sticky they are in relation to each other. 
we have a symbol for stickiness. We call it the coefficient of friction. And the symbol is that there. The symbol is the Greek letter mu. If you all look up, this is what the Greek letter mu looks like. It's where our lowercase and uppercase m, our lowercase m came from this letter in, in Greek. It looks like that. It sort of looks like a U, except it's got a long tail on it. So kind of like that. Except I got the tail on the wrong end. Sorry, let's try that again. It sort of looks like this. Like that. Okay. What does a Greek cow say? Mu. What does a Greek cat say? Mew. It doesn't have any units. It's dimensionless. It's just that if mu is big, there's a lot of friction. The objects are really sticky. If mu is small, there is little friction. Typically, mu is a decimal between 0 and 1, but I'll show you some examples where it's bigger than 1. Steel on ice, ice skates have a coefficient of friction, have a mu of about 0 0.01. Rubber on concrete has a mu of about 0.75. So friction depends on stickiness. You can think to yourself... Mu is sort of the same as stickiness. Bigger number, more sticky. Smaller number, slipperier. So you could also, I guess, think of it as slipperiness if you want to think about it as getting smaller. How many of you have ever tried to slide something heavy across the floor by just pushing on it, trying to get it to slide across the floor? A few of you? Is it harder to slide a heavy object or easier to slide a heavy object across the floor? Hmm. Meant to be really obvious. Brian. So, you might think that friction depends on, don't write this down, mg. And that's sort of right, but not quite right. So I'm going to stand up and do a little demonstration. I'll pause the video for a split second. I wrote here, friction depends on the force pushing the two surfaces together, which in simpler problems is the weight, mg, but not always true because it doesn't explain why I can lift up and make it slide easier or push down on an object and make it harder to slide. So a much, much better measure is the normal force. Here is our last equation for this unit. My abbreviation for the force of friction is FFR. I don't know why I put the R on there. I could just put F with a subscripted F, but for some reason, don't ask me why, Christy. I go F. Rick, I, I put the R on. If you don't, that's fine. And friction equals mu times the normal force. Where mu, mu, is the coefficient of friction, no units, and the normal force we can only figure out from a free body diagram. So let's go to example two already. Supposing we're pulling on a 6.5 kilogram mass across a rough surface. Let's say the coefficient of friction is about 0 0.64. 0 0.64 um, rubber on tires is around 0.75. So you would feel this tugging back on you. You would feel like you were having to oomph to slide. At a constant speed, how hard do we need to pull? We want to find this force right here, and I'm going to give this force a special name. We call the force coming from off of the page somewhere the applied force. How big an applied force do I need to put on this? You know what it's a job for? Free body diagram. Wah! You know what? Did they give me a picture? Rather than do a completely separate free body diagram, I'm going to say, since they gave me a picture, I'm going to label the forces right on my picture. I'm going to put my dot right there. What are the forces acting on this block? Get the obvious one. Are we sinking into the ground like quicksand? Are we flying into like suit man? So what else can I say? There must be an arrow pointing up exactly the same size as 
mg. What do we call that force that the ground exerts back at us? This is the normal force. Going to make it? That's a long blank. What else? Well, we have this applied force. I'm going to abbreviate it FAPP. -P 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 -P. F -A -P -P. Dope. And in this question, there is friction. How do I know? Because they gave me a mu. Which way is this block sliding? To the right? So which way am I going to point friction? Look up. Don't write this down. Why would that be wrong? And why would this be wrong? Doesn't matter. Yes, we do. We do know the acceleration. I know exactly what the acceleration is. What two words should I have underlined here? Constant speed. That means that the acceleration, Misha, is exactly what? Ah, I do know the acceleration, my friend. Exactly. Zero. Which means that all of my forces are, I'm looking for word means letter B. Cole, are you going to make it? Okay. Sorry? Balanced? So how long should I draw my friction arrow? Tell me when to stop. What two words did I underline here? Who's winning? It's a tie. So can you write for me an equation that has F applied in it? You could go winner minus loser, by the way, because which way are we moving to the right? So you might say, don't write this down. You might say, well, Mr. Duick, winner minus loser equals MA, but Misha, what's A? So what's M times zero? What's anything times zero? So you might say that, except what's right in front of the friction that I don't like? What's immediately in front of the friction that I don't like? How could I get rid of that negative very easily? Yep. Add it to the other side. What was on the other side originally? Uh, so what's zero plus friction? Just plain old. You know what? You could go through all that. Or since you know it's a constant speed, this is what you can write down. You could just say it's a tie. The applied force equals friction. So what did this question want me to find? The applied force. But you know how I'm going to find it? I'm going to find friction. OK. What's my equation for friction? Friction equals what times what? It's in the box. Friction equals what times what? It's in the box. Mu times the normal force. Sierra, what does friction equal? What times what? Joel, what does friction equal? What times what? Good. Rihanna, what does friction equal? What times what? Cole, what does friction equal? What times what? So I'm going to write that. If F applied equals friction, that means F applied equals a normal force. Do I know mu? Do I know mu? How big? I don't know the normal force. Oh, but look, 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 look. I know another force the same size as the normal force. What force is exactly the same size as the normal force? So I can say... How hard do I need to push? It's going to equal to mu mg. Let's do a quick check. Christy, do I know mu, the coefficient of friction? So yes. Do I know m, the mass? Do I know g, 9.8? Do I know everything that I need to know to crunch this? Good. It's going to be 0.65 times 6.5. 0.64, Mr. Duick, thank you. Times 6.5 times 9.8.
How big is the applied force? How hard do we need to pull in order to keep this going at a constant speed? I can tell you exactly how hard. I get 40.768. I'm going to go 40.8 newtons. I'll go to three sig figs. Probably should only go to two. I'll go to three. Is that right? Anybody else? And if I did this, this block would slide at a constant speed, wouldn't speed up, wouldn't slow down. There's my, if you want the fancy word, equilibrium point. Turn the page! Or is it next page over? Let's turn the page. We give a special name to an unknown force appearing from an outside source. We call it the, what did I call that unknown force coming from off the page? Yeah, we call it the applied force. Uh, you can imagine it's a little invisible angel pulling from off the screen or leprechauns or something. That's my way of saying I don't, want, I don't care what's pulling. Something's pulling or pushing. So we call it the applied force and the symbol F app. F with a subscripted APP. So example three, same question we just did, but now how big is the applied force? Chloe, what's it say in the question? How big is the applied force? In qu what, what did we get for the applied force in number two? And that was enough to go at a constant speed. Are we pulling harder? This is going to accelerate. In fact, Chloe, what does this question want me to find? This is a job for a free body diagram. Well, I'm going to be lazy. I'm just going to label the mass itself. What are the forces acting on this mass, Chloe? Get the obvious one. I totally agree. Is this mass sinking into the ground like quicksand? Is it flying to you like Superman? So, what other force? Which way? How long? Same length as? What do we call that one there? Called the normal force. The ground pushing back up. What else? Well, what's this question asking us or telling us? There's an applied force, I think. So I'm going to go F applied. That's F A P P. I know it's tough to see. What else? Is there friction in this question? How do I know? because they gave me a coefficient of friction. They gave me a mu. Which way would friction be pointing, Chloe? Stop. Which way is this mass moving, sliding to the? So what would oppose the sliding to the? So which way is friction pointing? Am I going to draw friction bigger, smaller, or the same size as F applied? If they were the same size, what would I be saying about the acceleration? Okay, so I think smaller, yeah? So I'll exaggerate it so it stands out. You okay with that, Mateo? You gonna make it? That was not. Sorry, Internet. Ah! Wait for it, wait for it. Again, sorry, Internet. My kids are awake now, though. You ready? Okay. Tissues are up there if you need them. Yep. Who's winning? Chloe, you're on. Who's winning? Yes. Who's the loser? What does winner minus loser always equal? Okay. What's this question asking us to find? How do I get the A by itself? I'm going to do that on my next line. If you don't mind, on my next line, I'm going to go A equals d -d 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 divide by M. And I also move the A to the, like I flip the whole equation in my head. I put the A by itself. Now, F applied is just going to drop down like a domino minus friction. I have an equation for friction. This is our new equation of the day. Friction equals what times what? Yep. 
Hey, what's Mew? I don't know. What's Mew with you? <laughs> what's, nothing. Okay. What's Mew? What's the normal force? I don't know the normal force. Oh, but look, 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 look. I know another force the same size as the normal force. Which one? Has to be. Otherwise, it would be sinking into the ground like quicksand or flying into like Superman. So I can say this. The acceleration is going to be F applied minus mu mg. Now, this is important. Friction is not mu mg. Friction is what times what? Mu times the normal force. And right now, because I'm giving you boring questions, mg and the normal force are the same. That's going to change. So don't ever memorize friction equals mu mg. Don't ever say that to me. Friction is what times what, Chloe? Mu times the normal force. Thank you. Uh, divide by m. I think we're good. Chloe, do I know the applied force? How big? Minus, what's mu? I don't know. What's mu with you? <laughs> what's mu? 0.64. M, 6.5. G, 9.8. Divide by 6.5. Is this a fraction? Yeah. So more than one thing on the top? So, brackets, get your calculators. Every one of you, try typing this in, please. This is one you have to get very comfortable typing. I like this question. I like this question. I like this question. Eighty six minus point six four times six point five times nine point eight divided by six point five. And by the way, notice Hannah, because I've given you a general approach, if we go to the moon, for example, all I need to change is G from nine point eight to I think G on the moon is one point six. We're good. You get six point nine six if I go to three sig figs. Chloe units, it's an acceleration. Good. A couple more we're done, and I got some cool videos for you too. Okay. Suppose that we were pulling on a 6.5 kilogram mass across a rough surface with a force of, I'm going to change this, I just think there's a typo, where it says 48 Newtons. Can you scribble that out? Can you make it 34 Newtons? What will happen? Hmm. This is a job for a free body diagram. Brian, what are the forces acting on this object? Get the obvious one. What else? Good. That's an N, Mr. Duick. Make that a little better. What else? Well, I have an applied force. What else? Okay. Who's winning? Why? So Brian is clever. Brian remembered example two. How hard did we have to pull just to keep this going at a constant speed? How hard are we pulling? Okay. Now, what if we hadn't done example two? I'm going to show you a way where you can catch an obvious mistake. You're going to want your calculators out. Supposing, Brian, you said, I think the applied is winning, because that's usually our guess. And so supposing you went F applied, minus friction equals ma. And then you said, I'd like to know what it's accelerating at, because when it says what will happen, I'm going to say, probably asking, how will it accelerate? How would I get the a by itself? So you're going to get f applied minus friction is what times what? The normal force all over m. 
and then you would say, I don't know the normal force. Oh, but look, 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 look. I don't know the force the same size as the normal force. What's the force of my free body diagram the same size as the normal force? Mg, 9.8 is not a force, it's an acceleration. Mg is the force. So you're telling me I can go F applied minus mu Mg all over M. I totally agree. And then you would say the applied force was 34 minus 0.64 times 6.5 times 9.8 all divided by 6.5. If you type that into your calculator, please do, you'll notice something that should get your attention. And what I like about this, what I, one of the things I've been telling you with my winner minus loser method, it's not idiot proof. But if you do make a sloppy mistake and you're paying attention, it will tap you on the shoulder. What did you notice? Have a calculator here. Again. What did you notice? Really? Okay, so on, oh, do I see your last block on Wednesday? If you don't have one on Wednesday, you're sticking around after school, bring a calculator. What do you notice? Your acceleration is what? Okay, if you ever have that in the method that I'm teaching you, if you got a negative acceleration, you pick the wrong winner. That's step one. Now, does that mean that this would be accelerating backwards? No, because friction, it's a Newton's third law force. It's only as big as it needs to be. What's the maximum friction can be? 40.8 Newtons. But if I pull with, remember Cole, 5 Newtons, we said it's pulling back with 5 Newtons. If I pull with 8 Newtons, it's pulling back with 8 Newtons. If I pull with 34 Newtons, you know how big it's pulling back with? 34 Newtons. So what do you get? Negative what? 1.04? Put an exclamation part, and then you can make a little note here. Negative means wrong winner. And I'm showing you that now because, Dylan, there are going to be, not down far down the road, situations that are so much more complicated. I don't know who the winner is. Well, guess. And keep your eye open on your calculator. If you get a negative answer, go fix it. And it's a pretty quick fix. Negative means wrong winner. In this case... A equals zero. Is that all right? So Brian kind of outsmarted me because he was clever enough to remember from example two. But honestly, if I'm crunching this ahead of time, and I'm sorry, if I haven't done example two ahead of time, I guess and I'll just keep my eye open on my calculator. A couple more, we're done. A student gives an old shopping cart a big push on a flat, rough surface. The fact that I use the word rough means I'm saying there's friction. Which of the following is the best free body diagram for the cart after the student has released it? Put your pencils down. I'm going to pause the video. Look up. My students are too keen. I was going to vote, but I had one student who shall remain nameless on the internet who blurted out the answer. Nameless student, what is the answer? Why? Convince me. I think for these, I would start out by eliminating ones that I know must be wrong. Which of these must be wrong? Why must D be wrong? If D was correct, which way would you be accelerating? You'd be speeding up. Okay, uh, That would be a free body diagram of a car stepping on the gas. Yes? Why must C be wrong? If C is correct, what's your acceleration? Zero. You'd keep going in a straight line at a steady speed. Uh, that would be if you're on ice skates where the ice has no friction. In real life, ice has a tiny bit of friction, but we'll often pretend it has no friction to make the math simple. Or that would be uh, in outer space maybe somewhere. I don't know what the two vertical forces would be. Maybe you're firing thrusters in opposite directions, but you'd keep going in a straight line at a steady speed. Oh! Oh! And I think in C, you'd also keep going in this. I think you have forces all canceling out. So what's the correct answer? A. Why? I don't want to write that big paragraph. What law did we use every time to eliminate all of our wrong answers? We didn't use forces coming in Paris. That's Newton's third. 
So you can write that, or you can say uh, object must accelerate in the direction of the unbalanced force. That's really what Newton's first says. I'm impressed. I give this often to my grade 12s, and so many of them want to pick D because it's moving forward. And I've done my rant last class, but I'll repeat myself. Hannah, it's not the direction of motion, it's the direction of acceleration. That's what Newton's laws tells us. So if you're moving forwards, but you're slowing down, it means you're accelerating to the left. Is that okay, Matteo? Not Matteo, but Matteo? Last one. A force of 12 newtons is required to keep a mass accelerating at 0.8 meters per second squared. What is the coefficient of friction required between the mass and the floor? You know what this question asked me to find? Hey, what's mu? I don't know, what's mu with you? Yeah, uh, it's asking us to find mu. You know what it's a job for? Okay, so now we can start to ask how slippery does a surface need to be? All right. Uh, did they give us a picture? Rather than draw a separate free body diagram, I'm going to be lazy and label the picture, and we're going to start to do that more and more often, Mike. Mike, what are the forces acting on this object? Get the obvious one. I agree. Which way? Good. What else? Are we sinking the ground like quicksand? Are we flying like Superman? So I know there mu Newton's first tells me there has to be a force pointing up. Same size as mg. What do we call it? Good. What else? On the picture, I see they've put a 12. And if you just left that as is, I'm fine. What do we call the mystery force from coming from off the page? I gave it kind of a dumb name. You remember what we called it? Yeah, so I'll, I'll, you know what? I'm going to put a little APP underneath the F there. And I'll put an arrow in pencil or pen just so I remember it so I don't miss it. Because if, if I don't do that, I might forget that it's an actual force. What else? Which way? Bigger, smaller, or the same size as F applied? I'm not sure, but I'm going to gamble that it's smaller, because otherwise, why would they be asking this question? Which isn't good physics. That's just good test writing. I like this question. I like this question. I like this question. All right. Who's winning? Yes. Who's the loser? What does winner minus loser always equal? Okay. Now, we've already done a couple where we had to get the A by itself. We said uh, divide by M. Not what they're asking yet. Friction equals what times what? No, it's never what I've said. It equals mu times the normal force. All righty. What am I trying to find in this question? What symbol is that? Hey, what's mu? I don't know. What's mu with you? Okay. Look up, look up, look up, look up. I want to get the mu by itself. What's right in front of the mu that I don't like? The negative. I'm going to do the swappy dance. I'm going to plus the mu fm to there, and I'm going to minus the ma to there at the same time. Is that okay? And I'm going to move over here so I can keep this all the same page for you folks. So I'm going to write this as F applied minus MA. That equals mu FM. This is why I've taught you all that formula manipulation, because to try and memorize all of these is just pointless. What am I trying to get by itself? What am I trying to find? What's the FN doing to the mu? Adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing? How I'll move it over. So you're telling me, don't memorize this, we've just derived it. You're telling me an equation for the coefficient of friction is the applied force minus ma divided by the normal force. Let's do our check. Do I know the applied force? 12. Do I know m? 5. Do I know a? Point 0.8. I don't know the normal force. Oh, but look, 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 look. I know another force the same size as a normal force. And this is why I was so fussy earlier. I can't simply say mu mg. In this case, it is. Yes? So we get this. Mu is going to be the applied force minus ma all divided by oh, mg. 
I've scrolled down, Mike. What are the numbers? What was the uh, the applied is twelve? Yes. Minus five. What was a? Divided by five times nine point eight. I made this question up on the weekend. I hope the numbers are good because I was doing some. I was doing all the work on my calculator, showing no work. I hope we get a good mu. I'm hoping something between zero and one, a decimal. Oh, is this a fraction? Yeah. More than one thing on the top? Yeah. Brackets. More than one thing on the bottom? Yes. Brackets around the bottom, too. Right? The 5 and the 9.8. Got to go in one big uber bracket as well. Do you get... 0.163? I'll go 0.1. Yeah, 0.163. Units. What? No units. No units. It's dimensionless. Really? Yeah, that's what I said. Mu is just a number, but doesn't have units attached. What's your homework? Take home quiz, number one. Try number one. Number two. I'm going to assign most of these, number three. And with only seven minutes left, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark the take-home quiz on, when do I see it? Wednesday? Uh, I'm going to give you Wednesday to also work on this. And I got a couple of videos that I've skipped over. I'll show you the videos on Wednesday. I'm going to press pause. We'll do the next lesson on Friday, I think. So number four is good. Five is good. Six is good. I'm going to assign all these. Seven is good. Eight is good. Nine is good. Ten is good.